here for a Power Lunch exclusive is Scott Wine. He is the CEO of CNH Industrial and the former CEO of Polaris. Scott, it's great to see you again. Welcome. Kelly, thanks for having us on. Any market perception you want to correct here with the stock down today? You know, I, I'm really proud of what the, the results team delivered. Uh, you know, Q4 was up 27 percent, finished the year up 21 percent at top line, you know, 14 percent on the bottom line. So really great results. And, you know, we talked about six to 10 percent growth next year with margin expansion, you know, generating one point three to one point five billion dollars of cash flow. I don't know what I can correct about that. You know, the uh, the markets are not going to be perfect forever. We're honest about that. We don't talk about things that uh, we don't have confidence in. But, you know, we do have confidence in this team, the products we're bringing to market and uh, really excited about the year we finished and the year we're getting into now. If we segment your business, industrial activities, agricultural equipment, construction equipment, all of them had uh, revenue gains last year. Uh, as you look ahead into 2023, is there one area that you think has the brightest prospects and one that you think you're going to be concentrating on uh, because maybe it has more headwinds? You know, Tyler, surprisingly, as we go into the year, um, both construction and ag are projecting um, you know, positive, strong growth in that 6 to 10 percent range. So um, we are seeing regional differences. Uh, we talked uh, on the call a little bit about you know, with the uh, recent election in Brazil, it's caused some farmers to have some angst. You know, we think it's a short term pause there. Uh, Europe's a little bit um, edgy right now with the lingering impacts of the war. And um, but overall, our demand remains quite strong. Uh, we see, uh, again, good top line growth next year with margin expansion. So, you know, we feel reasonably good, but both the construction and the ag business are going to deliver uh, volume increases in 2023. Scott, you're joining us at a time when it appears as though the manufacturing sector of the U.S. economy is in recession. Industrial production peaked in September, a manufacturing portion of that maybe even earlier on. Can you, and we've seen what the ISM indices have done the last couple of months. Can you give us a little bit of insight into what you're hearing from clients and why you think all of a sudden activity has kind of hit a pause? You know, I, as um, you know, educated as an economist, I pay really close attention to what's going on. Uh, interestingly, what I've learned in my two years here is that, you know, we actually, our demand is much more related to the ag cycle, and you know, that's 80 percent of our business, um, than it is the overall economy. So it's not surprising with the Fed raising interest rates um, that, that we are seeing a potential slowdown in, in many of the um, sectors of the economy. But you know, with soft commodity prices remaining high based on historical norms, farm income uh, being strong, you know, we are seeing really, especially here in North America, very strong demand for our products. And, you know, order books booked out through Q3. If we open up tomorrow, uh, we will we fill out Q4 very quickly. So really, um, here in North America specifically, we see very, very good demand. I, I look at some, we're running some uh, photographs of some of your equipment, mostly agricultural equipment, and I'm, and I'm struck by the, the idea that those machines look pretty much like they did a couple of decades ago, but they're very, very different on the inside. And, and what seems to be so different is the use of intelligent or digital uh, agriculture. Can you tell us a little bit about what the next frontier is within those machines to make them more efficient, effective, uh, and, and, and helpful to farmers who are, who are uh, uh, raising crops? You know, Todd, I, I grew up in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, so I've been around this equipment all my life. And I will tell you that what we're selling today is nothing like those. Granted, I'm old, so, um, but nothing like that. And really, it is around precision and autonomy. The tools that we give farmers I like to boil it down in simple terms and saying this game that we're playing in agriculture is about productivity and yield. There's not much more arable acreage coming into the, the world, uh, but there's more mouths to feed. So the way you do that is through productivity and yield. You know, we made the large acquisition of Raven Industries um, in 2021. That is yielding incredible results, helping us improve our tech stack so we can put better technology into our various pieces of equipment. It's, it's we start We talk about tractors. But if you look at our combines where we've got truly market leading products, there's more machine learning AI uh, embedded into those products. And as we put on top of that better autonomy and precision tools, it just allows the farmers to get so much more mm -hmm. uh, out of their equipment than they could historically.
You're talking to two Virginians, Can we uh, ask? Scott. What, 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 what town what, what did, were you uh, raised in? The large town of Dayton, Virginia, just outside of Harrisonburg. I could Harrisonburg, I know. Dayton, I do not know. Do you know Dayton? I no, I know. I, I know Harrisonburg. If it's not on Route 81, I don't know it. That's. <laughs> I uh, know we, we were we were all four four miles off of 81, so we're way out in the hicks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Scott, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you.